Hello and welcome everybody. I'm Prefix Wiz bringing you another Unity tutorial. In today's continuing series of the Unity GUI, we'll be covering the canvas. Counting double digit thousands. <laughs> And we are talking about the UI canvas. Let's go ahead and open Unity. So first, let's ask the question, what is the canvas? And simply put, the canvas is basically the space where the GUI is displayed. Additionally, you have to have a canvas if you're using a UI element. So think of the canvas as a painter's canvas. You have to have something to put the elements on. So Unity reserves a space specifically for those elements. Now at the moment, I have several canvases already displayed here, but I have them all turned off. Let's note a couple of things about the canvas to begin with. Let's note that the canvas is on the UI layer. Also note that if you were to right click and create a UI element without creating the canvas first, it will automatically create a canvas if no other canvas is active in the scene. So if I were to create a UI element image and there is no other canvas active in the scene, it will create one for us. There's our canvas created for us, there's our image. In addition, all UI elements must be a child of the canvas. Okay, let's move down to the canvas area. And right here you see canvas and the render mode. There are three types of render modes. There is screen space overlay, screen space camera, and world space. Let's jump up here to our UI canvas green, and we're going to activate it in the scene. And here you see our green UI canvas. It is also in screen space overlay. And in this mode, the canvas is set to fit the screen and then render directly without reference to the scene or camera, even if there is no camera in the scene. For instance, if I were to deactivate this camera in the scene, the UI canvas with screen space overlay is always persistent. This would be useful for something like a game menu, and it doesn't depend on having a camera to view it. Next, we activate our red canvas in the scene, and we have this set to screen space camera. And we select our camera and drop it in render camera, and this is the camera that is rendering this UI. So this is the camera here. Let's zoom in on it or F to focus in on it. And no matter where we go in the world, it follows us. It is specific to our camera. And this would be good for something like a HUD. So if there's multiple cameras in the scene, the HUD can actually change per camera. And next we have the UI blue canvas. Let's go ahead and activate that in the scene. And we have this set to world space. In the world space, this is the only setting that can be manipulated in the rec transform. So with the world space setting, you can move the UI around the world in 3D space and it will remain in the position in which you put it in 3D space. You can change the position on the X, change the position on the Y, change the position on the Z. You can change the width, you can change the height. And if you were to move the camera around in the scene, notice that the world space canvas is in the exact same spot we left. This would be useful for visual health bars over top of a character or model, something to that effect. And let's go ahead and deactivate that. We are going to reactivate the green canvas in the scene, and we are going to activate the orange UI canvas in the scene. Okay, moving down here to the sort order. The sort order is basically what's being rendered first. What does the camera want to render first? What are we telling the camera to render first? So if you have two UIs in which you always want a specific one to render before the other, it's a good idea to use the sort order. So the higher the number in the sort order, the more relevant it is for the camera to render. But what if we change the sort order on the green to one? Notice that our camera now renders the green first. Now, if we move the sort order on the orange, say two, it will show before the green because the green is still at one. Now keep in mind, this sorting is for the canvas layer. Each UI element is rendered based on where it is located in the hierarchy. For instance, this text, let's move this in front of the image. Notice the text is below the image in the hierarchy. So it is being rendered 
first. But if we were to move the text above the image, now you see that the text is behind the image. Elements are rendered in this manner. Canvases are rendered by sort order. Now let's take a look at our multiple canvas example. I have here one canvas with 44 images spaced out accordingly like you see here on the screen. And then I have 44 canvases with one image each in the exact same spots as the canvas with 44 elements. So if I were to deactivate the 44 canvases, I'm still rendering the same amount of elements in the same spot with 44 elements. But if I deactivate the 44 elements and reactivate the 44 canvases with one element each, I get the same result. So it's really based on how you are structuring your project, whether you use several canvases or just one. And if you toggle pixel perfect, this is just a toggle that allows the camera to render the UI with or without anti-aliasing. And moving down to target display. And in order to use this, we have to have more than one camera. And we have to use the use of display over here under the game tab. So for instance, in this UI canvas orange, we set the target display to two. We use camera number two and we change the target display to two. So if we were to go over here to the game view and switch the display to two, it is now being rendered on camera number two. And additional shader channels is additional ways to render your UI elements within your canvas. All right, and moving down to the canvas scaler. And in the canvas scaler, this component is used for controlling the overall scale and pixel density of each individual UI element within the canvas. This scaling affects everything under the canvas, including the sizes and image of borders. And moving down here to the graphic raycaster. The Raycaster looks at all the graphics on the canvas and determines if any of them have been hit. And this is where you can manipulate what can be hit by using the blocking objects and blocking masks. Thank you for watching this video, and I'm interested to see what you have done with your canvases and your games or your projects. If you could leave a link and a brief description in the comments down below, I'll be more than happy to check them out. And as always, guys, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe.